Hello guys, today we will be talking about Laravel factories. And factories are used for two cases, for seeding the data manually, like in this example, or for automated tests to seed more data repeatedly. And I will show you both examples in this video, and I will show you why it's beneficial to use factories, and also we will dive a bit deeper how to customize those factories to get uh, specific results, like reusing factories for some deeper data or relationships. Let's go. Typical example, for example, you have a project and you need to fake 100 users and test if the pagination works for your table. Let's put it this way. So how do you fake seed the 100 users? And this is a typical example. In Artisan, you do PHP Artisan make seeder, fake users seeder in my case, and then you do for loop with 100 records and you create a user using faker factory to fake the name and email. And if you run that, php artisan db seed minus minus class fake users seeder as you can see five seconds or even more so that took quite a while right but the result is that's our database so 100 users are seeded successfully and if we refresh that page we can test if the pagination works. So at the bottom we have pagination, so page two, data tables working fine. So that's how you would do that without any factory. So just manually creating the user. And another way of doing the same thing is factory. There is a file that comes from default Laravel. It's in database factories, user factory. And factory is kind of a set of rules for the fields for that model. So for the model user class, you define that factory and define all the fields with their default values. So name, email, and all of that. And that, I repeat, it comes from default Laravel. I didn't change anything here. So if you have those set of rules for users, in the seeder, instead of doing for loop, you can do one line factory, user class as a parameter, then how many records do you want, which is 100, and create. And let's comment that one out. We save and we launch that command. See instant result. So that's first benefit is that factories are much quicker than uh, doing it manually record by record. And the result in the database, we should have 200 records just to prove that it's actually successful. So 200. So that's one reason why I use factories to have clearer seeders and the rules for those models would be elsewhere in the factories. So consider the factories as a set of rules for the models, for the fake data, for default values of fake columns. But the real power of factories is shown when you try to reuse the same set of rules, the same factory, multiple times. And that usually is happening in the testing. So if you have automated tests to test something, you have to repeat all over again. So create a user, test something, create another user, test something else. And without factory, you would have to copy paste all of that above. So for each user, name, email, and all of that. And this is a typical, very simple example of test case with two tests. One test is testing that the dashboard is returning OK. And in other case, some fake URL returns 404. And we're testing both cases. And we're doing that with fake login user, acting as user. And in both cases, we need to create some users. So this is the line that would actually help. So we just call the factory and it creates a user for us. So without factories, again, you would have to repeat quite a lot of text to create name, email, password, and all of that. Now let's dive a little deeper in a few more examples with factories. How can you customize them? So by default, you can create a user, but also you can override some fields from your default rules. So let's take a look at two tests. We test that non-admin user cannot access users list, so this URL, and we assert that the status is 403. And then in another test, we need to create admin user and test that admin actually can access. So to do that, we pass a parameter. In create function for the factory create, you can pass an array of whatever fields you want to be overridden. So let's say we have a field users role ID, uh, which is admin, and we override that. Or another way to override some fields is to give them meaning and to make it more readable with factory states. So instead of doing role ID one, actually what we need is to 
create an admin. So we create in the factory file, factory state, instead of factory define, and we define that state as a parameter and we add role ID in their set of rules. And then whenever you need to create to use that factory, you just call states admin create. So that is much more readable than role ID one. Now a few things about relationships. So first thing, you can use a factory within a factory. So in this case, we are creating state of admin and we need to assign role ID and it could be a random thing from the factory. In this case, probably not the best example, but that was the illustration that you can use factory within a factory and that would create its own record and attach to the user. And if you have many to many relationships, so for example, you need to create a user and then assign a role to that, not in role ID, but in many to many in pivot table role user. One way of doing that is whenever you need that admin, you just do it directly in the test. So user roles attach one with eloquent many to many, or in the factory itself, there is a method called after creating. In fact, there are two methods after creating and after creating state. So maybe you want to create roles for every user, or maybe you want to create roles specifically for the admin state. So whenever that state is being called, whenever user create is happening like this, then this would happen automatically. So we don't need to do that here. It's enough to set that rules in the factory. And final thing I wanted to show you is you can create factories manually. So PHP Artisan make factory, or you can use a package to generate the factories from your existing model and migration. And this is a really powerful and popular package created by Marcel Posiot. And I've tried it myself. So just require the package and it generates the factory from your migration and your model relationships. And this is the result. And this is what I've done locally. I've created a projects table just for the testing for foreign key for the user ID. In the model, I described the relationship and I've run the command to generate the model, tried a few times, and this is the result. Project factory looks like this. So as I mentioned, factory within a factory and then using faker properties to generate all of the columns depending on which type it is in migrations. Really smart thing. So that's it about factories. I hope I convinced you that it is a really useful thing to see the data, to fake the data, especially for testing. And speaking about testing, just recently I've shot another video with a simple example of PHP unit testing. So if you haven't started that, if you haven't tried that, the link is on the screen. So click that and check that out and maybe you will start testing. Also, subscribe to the channel and see you guys in another video.